Hello, Donna Cato here. Uh, welcome to my channel. Now today I'm going to be putting together and offering to you a tutorial that's primarily photographs. Well, it may be all photographs. Anyway, I don't think that's going to hurt the process at all. It is quite simple. Now what you see before you is what we will do. Actually, I'm not going to do that central piece. That central piece is up to you. The important thing is that it is flat. All right. So uh, let's get started. So if you look at the piece I'm going to be setting, you'll know that I have tutorials, two tutorials that will teach you how to do it. Now they're separate tutorials, but one is making a faux bone and the other is transferring. Uh, making a laser transfer and that's really all this is so if you want to make this then all you have to do is watch those other tutorials so um, Yeah, let's let's continue Now here you see the piece it's just sitting on a sheet of black clay that has been pressed to a ceramic tile now what you don't know what is not obvious is that the cured piece with a geisha face and uh, the base black sheet are exactly the same thickness and this is important make sure that what you are setting is the same thickness as what you are going to set it into having established that they are both the same thickness I want you to take a scalpel or a, a clay knife or something sharp and I want you to carefully cut around the piece that you've placed on top. Now try not to cut beyond it. In other words, be careful about the way you cut this. You don't want to be cutting beyond the corners. So when you reach a corner, stop. Then start again. And when you reach another corner, stop. You just don't want to be cutting into that base clay where there is no need to. And here you can see what I have cut. And you can see that at the corners, there isn't really a lot of extra cutting. So make sure that you cut carefully. And, um, you know, no need to go fast. You can just do, do the best job you can. Okay, so just take your blade or take some tool, lift that cut out and remove it. So here is the hole with the cutout removed. Now I want you to take the piece that you're going to set in and I'd like you to put poly paste along the edge so um, the cured and the uncured stick well together. Now drop the piece in the hole. Next, you're going to want to snug that raw black clay up against the cured piece. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of pressing it in and pressing and then taking my finger and stroking over and then addressing the next part and just pushing that clay up against the cured piece inside. Then stroke, then push, then stroke and push. You want this to fit tightly into the hole you cut in the raw clay. So just continue doing that because this is important. This is an important step. There's really no need to hurry when you do this. Just address each side of the piece and make sure that that black clay is snug against the cured piece inside. Now the process of doing that, pushing the clay up and stroking, well, you want to make sure that the piece and that raw clay are level. So take your brass rod and just roll lightly over it a few times to make sure. Now this step is optional. I like a textured surface. So I am taking a texture sponge and I'm pressing it into the clay. But as I said, this is optional. You do not need to do this. 
Now here you see the whole sheet uh, with the piece set inside. So that's what it will look like. Next you're going to cut that black frame as you wish around the piece. Now what I'm showing you there are the three sides are gently curved which means you will take your blade and just gently arc it and then cut through arc and cut through and you're going to do that to each of the sides. Now don't think you have to hit the mark perfect to begin with because you don't. If you're a little apprehensive take it slowly. Cut some, cut some, cut some, remove it, cut some, cut some, cut some, remove it and slowly cut your way to your ultimate shape. Now the next thing you have to do is cure that piece. And now my instruction to you is at 300 degrees, cure for 20 to 30 minutes. Now curing is a difficult thing for us always, but this piece is going to be cured again. So what I want at this point is I just really want it to be cured enough to handle. And maybe it's not completely cured, maybe it is at 30 minutes, but um, we're going to cure it again. So 20 to 30 minutes will be fine at 300 degrees. All right, it's cured. So remove it from the tile. You should just slide the tip or the side of your blade underneath a, a corner and it should just pop right off. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take that poly paste and you are going to put it all over the back. All right, let's try this again. Now the next step is to put a black sheet of clay on the back of the pendant. All right, so here are the considerations. Number one, we're going to be drilling into this pendant and we're going to be gluing cord into the side. All right, now that isn't just this sheet, the total thickness. And the total thickness is the black frame and this clay on the back. So those two together have to be wide enough for whatever size cord you're going to want to glue into it. You're going to have to drill into it, then you're going to glue the cord in. So you just have to make sure that it's thick enough for that. I tend to like my uh, pendants and things very thin. This can become problematic because, generally speaking, I want a two millimeter hole. Therefore, all of my pieces must be at least four millimeters thick because then that will accommodate that two millimeter cord. Now, this isn't a problem if you like very, very thick, sort of bulky pendants, and some people do. This is just um, personal taste then you don't really have to worry. Then this sheet that you're going to put on the back of your pendant will be thick, maybe through setting one, maybe through setting two. The problem, the consideration, the issues are more um, eh, prevalent or there are issues if you want a very thin pendant. Just make sure that the combined frame and the backing are thick enough for you to drill those, your holes. Now just in case I didn't make my point to you in the last two minutes, here is a picture of the two millimeter cord being glued into the side. So now I think you probably understand what I'm talking about. Okay, and here you have a texture sponge texturing the back of the clay. Now these days I do it a little bit faster. I tend to roll the sheet with the texture sponge through the pasta machine. That's faster. Ta-ta! There it is. All right, next you're going to cut away all that clay from around and you can see the tip of my scalpel. I'm just going to cut all the way around the cured piece. Okay, time to cure this again. Now, 
if you look closely, you can see that I have some polyester batting underneath it. And, you know, that's to prevent it from getting shiny through the curing process. So let's cure this at 300 degrees for 30 minutes. Now, once the piece is cured and it's cool, then you're going to take a sanding block. This is a coarse grit sanding block. And you're going to sand the edges, just sand all the way around because it looks so much better. After sanding, you probably have three sharp corners. It's up to you. I like to sand them down to soften them. So that's what I do, but that's just a choice. So now it's time to determine where we're going to drill those holes in the, uh, in the side of the pendant. Now, I like to find the center first, so I found the center, and then I will find the center point between that center and an edge, and the center, center excuse me, and an edge. And then I indicate where that is with two more marks, and that's where I will drill those two holes, not the center hole but the two holes to the right and the left. Okay, so here you see the tip of my two millimeter hand drill in the hole. I'm ready to start drilling. Now there's a video that follows and that video is going to, I'll talk you through more of it in the video. All right, so I'm starting to drill, and what you're going to notice is that clay comes out. It's got to go somewhere, right? So as I'm drilling, the clay exits the hole. This is why you have to drill slowly. If you drill too fast, it may get stuck inside, and then you've got problems. You'll also find that the drill bit starts to be pulled through, so drill slowly, and you won't have any problems. Sanding tends to rough up and lighten clay, and you can darken the clay again by the application of Nivea cream. All right, so let me talk a little bit about the Nivea cream. You know, it's really, really greasy. I don't like it for skin, but I have found that for clay, it's really wonderful because it's so greasy. It will become sort of it gets absorbed by that very rough clay. And what will happen is it won't get be shiny. It develops a nice matte sheen. Now, do you have to do it again? Maybe, maybe you will. It's not some sort of permanent uh, fix, I would say. But what I like about it is that it's so widely available. It is not expensive and it's not toxic. So I don't mind using it at all. I find it to be a very good solution. So how long should that cord be? That's two millimeter cord. Well, that's really up to you. What you will do is determine for yourself how large an arc you want over your piece, what you think looks good. So just take a piece of that two millimeter cord, put it in one end, put it in the other, examine it. If it's too long, cut it shorter and just keep cutting until you arrive at the length and at the arc and curve of the cord that you want. All right, so in the last photo you saw the cord and then you must have seen something on the cord. Well, that is a four millimeter O-ring. And using that four millimeter O-ring will turn the pendant to the right side so it's facing forward instead of sideways. Now, you're going to glue the cord into the hole. Now thread that four millimeter O-ring on the cord and then secure the other end of the cord into the other hole. There it is. There's the pendant on a choker. You can put it on a chain, you can put it on more of unicord, you can do whatever you want with it, but wear it. Wear it proudly. So I want to thank you again for tuning in to my channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing if you liked and subscribed. Um, it, it, this is it's very tough for me. I do read comments, but it's really hard to answer because it takes a lot of time for me to put content up. Maybe not building it as much as uploading it. 
my service provider needs a new slogan. If you like dial up, you're going to love us. And that's what I contend with. So um, someday maybe I'll have faster Wi-Fi. Anyway, thanks again. And uh, until we meet again, goodbye.